Greetings, you potatoes in trench coats, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix. And, of course, welcome to what is hopefully a quickish video, at least for me, in which we're going to be taking a look at one of the new origins added in Gigastructural Engineering, the Elysian Overseers. Well, actually, this is a massive rework of one of the older origins, the Orbital Elysium. I can't quite remember what the full name of the old origin was, but it has been changed really dramatically and like all of the origins i absolutely adore it massively changes how you play the game with the elysian overseers every single one of your worlds will have an orbital elysium where the rulers preside over the worlds themselves never stepping foot on those planets because they are simply above the unwashed masses by doing this they can directly empower the world whilst also having very powerful ruler jobs and most crucially it gives jobs per X population. So on the worlds, you can have a seriously insane amount of pops, which I adore. It's one of my favorite things in Stellaris, really, really stacking up loads of populations. And this way, we can control the rabble through more peaceful means. So how this works is every time you get a new world, you'll instantly begin production of an Orbital Elysium. They will have all of your ruler jobs, these ruler jobs are incredibly powerful, and they will directly influence the world itself. On the world, the different colony types now really, really matters, because there will be a unique building there which gives jobs per certain amount of population, and depending on what colony type you have, depends on what types of jobs are available from that building, at least in terms of how many of each, and I think some of them are unique to only specific colony types. We'll get more into that as we play the game itself. It massively challenges how the game is played. I'm not quite sure if it's really powerful or really weak, but it just seems really, really fun. Now, in addition to Giga Structural Engineering, I've also got the Ethics and Civics mod. I have the links in the description and the full names, as always, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So to test out this origin, we are the Church of Thorn, our glorious leader. We have an imperial cult, and very quickly we will turn Thorn into the god emperor they deserve. We are a police state to make sure the masses obey Thorn, and we are of course the chosen people. We are, after all, the children of Thorn. I won't really get too much into all of this, but essentially I am going with a heavy lean into minerals and energy, in addition to quite a bit of extra unity. The species itself are budding, so we're going to get even more population. Every time we have a new population, it contributes to the organic pop assembly. We are making more of ourselves through budding. We are thrifty, giving us more trade value, because there is actually a lot of trade value through this origin. And then we are strong, just to give us an overall output increase of energy, minerals, food, absolutely everything. So with that, let's get straight into the game and check out the origin. And so begins our empire on the very outskirts of the galaxy. It matters not, for we are the centre of the universe. And this is us, the orbital Elysium controlling the entire planet. So let's take a quick look at this first then. So with the orbital Elysium itself, as you can probably tell, it has a lot of unique districts. It has the planetary control center, which will give us overlords, which directly increase the stability of the planet. So no matter how unhappy the planet is, it doesn't really matter. The overlords here will make sure they comply with our rule. We then have the administration district, which currently is giving us priests because we are spiritualist. We have the research district, which rather than normal researchers, gives us science directors, which is the ruler type of researcher you would normally get. And as you can imagine, they are very powerful, giving amenities and unity in addition to a lot of research each. And then we have the entertainment district, giving us a media mogul. The media mogul is unique because it increases amenities throughout the entire empire. Not by much, but it is the entire empire, which obviously can really, really stack up. The habitation district gives us politicians. So it's all about those ruler jobs you would normally have on a planet. Then on the planet itself, we have the unique building, the Ministry of Employment. It's through this that the worlds are controlled, and the reason why you can have so many populations on these planets. As you can see here, it gives you plus one clerk job per four pops, an extra farmer per 33, an extra miner per four, and then you can read the rest there. There is a lot of extra jobs. 
This changes, though, depending on the world type. So let's say I want more food. So this now becomes an agri world. And now we're getting a farmer every two populations. So that's a lot of extra jobs, which are all to do with the colony type. So we really, really need specialized worlds. However, you can't build any normal buildings on these planets. Rather than adding building slots to the planet, every time you add a city district, it instead adds an extra building slot to the orbital Elysium, which is both good and bad. So it means we can really buff up these ruler jobs, but it means these worlds don't benefit from the specialist buildings and all the bonuses they can apply. So a bit of a give and take there, which is kind of the whole point of this origin, which is why I love it so much. So for now, I would actually like this to become a faith world. So if we click that, we now have an artisan per six, I've just noticed, so we actually get more artisans out of this. But we also get a priest every 13. So if I let this update, it should change fairly soon. There we go. So now we have two priest jobs. We have more artisans at the cost of some of the other jobs. And that is pretty much it. So what we need to do is test this out by getting more worlds and checking out everything. Wow, our amenities are really struggling. Can we please get more clerks? Actually, that's going to be a bit of a problem as well, because now we need the miners. Ah, this is why we need the overlords. The overlords are making sure everything is running nice and smoothly. So, I'll quickly expand a little bit, and then we'll check out how it works once we get some new worlds and see how powerful slash weak this really is. I think it's either going to be really strong or really weak. I don't think it's going to be a middle ground, and it's all to do with the balance of not being able to build normal buildings on the planets. Our first world has been colonized, and once that happens, we'll start building our Elysium. Uh, but before then, I really should say this. The colonies are incredibly expensive at 600 alloys each. Less of a problem later on, obviously, but right now, a little bit on the brutal side. Can I just about get there? No, but I'll get there soon. I want as many colonies as possible, because honestly, I just want as many of the orbital Elysiums as possible. Especially so what I'm probably going to focus on quite heavily is the science directors, because they do also produce unity, but of course, they're also a nice big chunk of tech. So it's everything I could possibly want. The worlds themselves will be sure to provide for the Elysiums. The world is colonized, and as such, we now have the Orbital Elysium construction site. This is automatically placed. It takes 600 days, and then we'll have our ring. The world itself is pretty much worthless until it is complete. Without an Orbital Elysium to guide them from on high, the inhabitants of this world are disordered and inefficient. And that's actually something I didn't mention about the normal world as well. Once the ring is complete, you'll get this buff instead, the Orbital Elysium host planet. This will reduce pop demotion time by 60 which is really good when you're constantly swapping jobs around. Obviously, we have no building slots, and we have minus 50% to our max districts, which is fine because you get so many jobs. Provide 75 jobs per 100 pops on the planet, which, yeah, we don't really need that many districts when we're getting that many free jobs. We'll probably just end up with lots and lots of city districts by the end, and as you can also see, absolutely no tech. Minus 75%, making tech pretty much only on the Orbital Elysiums. Again, I'm not sure if this is going to be really powerful or really weak. We have our first two colonies, one of which is a generator world, giving us a technician every two pops. The other is a mining world, giving us a miner every two pops. Now, one thing I've just noticed, though, is our alloys are struggling a little bit, and this is because of these things. They have the Habitat Administration, which is normally the Habitat main building, and this does cost alloys to simply run. So I may need to put down some alloy foundries on some of these, just until we have some proper foundry worlds. And that brings me to something else. Is it worth it to colonize these kinds of planets, the ones with almost 0% habitability, just to get one of the Orbital Elysiums, and then on the world, just putting down Declare Population Controls? Because we don't really want the populations there, they'll cost too much for the resources they produce. Because these are really powerful. The Orbital Elysiums are amazing. But is it worth it for the Empire size as well, their colonies? I don't know if that's strictly a good idea, but I'm very tempted just to see how that would work. So far, we're doing very well. Lots of unity, and a little bit of tech. Mostly focusing on the research districts when I can. So it's time to test something out. So we have this world here, which is pretty much useless to us because, well, the habitability is just atrocious. But I have built our Orbital Elysium. What happens if I destroy this world? At least this colony, I should say. A bit too brutal there saying the world. 
So it's going to cost us some influence. So as soon as I have that influence, I'm going to find out what happens. I'm hoping that the Elysium stays. I'm thinking it won't. Technology secure. But we'll see how it all turns out. Anomaly found. Okay, so good news then. We do keep the Orbital Elysium. Now, of course, that does cost 200 influence to do. So really, I doubt that's ever going to be worth it. But it is good to know that that works. Oh, no, never mind. So it does work, but not really. So we have insufficient planetary support. Without the support of infrastructure on the planet below, the inhabitants of this station are struggling. Well, it was worth doing that just for the science. But it does mean that this is a pretty much dead system. I'm going to keep it and just call it the failure of Thorn. Science was done, and often comes up wanting. So what I'm noticing so far is it's very easy with this origin type to get way ahead of your consumer goods production. It is kind of crazy because everything here wants consumer goods, every single ruler type, so every single one of these districts wants consumer goods. So for now, I am having to put civilian industries on the actual habitats themselves. Same with the alloy foundries, because if we take a look, see over here, it does take a good while before you start getting enough jobs just from the Ministry of Employment to really support everything. So that is something to note. Definitely something to be a little bit concerned about. We also have what I'm assuming will soon be in enemy empire right next to us, which really isn't what I want right now. I've renamed the failure of Thorn to the test of Thorn, and I've made all of these worlds holy worlds. Because that was the second ascension perk I picked, Consecrated Worlds, so all three of these now are increasing the unity of our glorious empire. In addition to a lot of other stats as well. What did they give again? I completely forgot. Unity, Amenities, and Spiritualist Ethics Attraction. It took me a long time to get them all into Holy Worlds, by the way, to really, really slow down our Unity production for a while, but there we are. Definitely worth it. This entire system was a test. Even renamed the system into Trial. Found. The Trial of Thorn, sorry, the Test of Thorn. You know what? Trial's better for this as well. Nope. There we are. It doesn't help that currently my microphone is literally in the way of my keyboard, so my arms are having to go around it because my microphone boom snapped yesterday. Anyway, it's making typing difficult. The Trial of Thorn is now going to be our media empire for our lovely propaganda and lovely videos for all of our people. And the ones here in the Trial of Thorn, I imagine don't really want to be here because they're less happy and everything else. So these are the rulers which have got on the bad side of Thorn or the other rulers here to make YouTube videos for all eternity. Truly a dark and depressing face. So one thing to note is that we're doing very well in terms of both tech and unity. So I think that's the strong point. It kind of forces a more balanced start. Though this is going to start to stop once we run out of district space on all of our controls. So it's going to be good to start off with and then slow down. So I imagine you'll have to swap over to the giga structures and building mega structures quite quickly. And by then, hopefully enough of these worlds will be decent enough forge worlds that we're not really going to have too many problems. I mean, really, this should be a mining world. Considering, but we don't really need many more minerals. I don't really want to swap over the roots of Thor. You know what, actually? I think I might. Turn this into a forge world. So this is now going to be the Blade of Thorn. And just change that to Blade. There we are. And then we're going to turn this world here. No, sorry, where is that mineral world? There it is. This is going to become a mineral world instead. Which means I am going to struggle a little bit now for consumer goods, but I don't mind. There's a lot of other worlds we're currently building up, so I can turn one of those into consumer goods instead. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to balance these things yet. Definitely a matter of, um, practice. 
probably building too many of these as well. But I don't care. They're giving me unity and tech. I just love them. They're just fantastic. Also, I got the naming wrong there, because of course I did. There we go. We now have a new Civic, which I've instantly gone to Masterful Crafters. This is already a pretty good Civic, in my opinion. Not one of the best, but in my opinion, it makes it a lot smoother. But it's a lot better for this origin. The reason is, this allows me to get building slots from our industrial districts. Whereas before, I was kind of forced to do only city districts, because I want extra building slots for our orbital Elysiums. Now, we have the choice. You still probably want to go city districts because you don't get any extra housing from the Ministry of Employment but loads of jobs. So, more city districts than industrial, but now you have a choice and that's going to make things a lot easier for me. So one more thing I didn't really consider is that because it's a habitat administration and apparently no way to upgrade it, certain techs aren't applying to our orbital Elysiums. For instance, I can't upgrade the monument over here because I don't have a planetary administration. I'm also not getting the plus 10% to all resources and 10% upkeep from one of the techs. It's actually quite severe. Still seems powerful at the moment. We have rushed a lot of distinct techs and because of that we are able to defend ourselves even from this advanced foe. Because, well, we, we are currently on max difficulty without scaling difficulty. They don't like us very much, they don't hate us at the moment. But we are about to get more border friction with them so I can't imagine that's going to last all that long. But I'm also not particularly scared of them. And I could be focusing more on alloys rather than tech as well, because if we just don't build these districts, the, the rulers over here will eventually move out to other places because they don't start off as rulers. They start off as I'm a specialist, so as workers. I'm not too sure the exact mechanics here. Yep, as workers. So this one will eventually move out if the colony is old enough. So we could just have really powerful normal worlds with a really big economy lead. So. I'm pretty safe right now. We could always change these things later. I think I've just focused too much on our unity and our tech, though. Saying that, as long as we're safe, we are rushing the traditions and rushing the tech. Even without the other mod, which is, of course, modifying our jobs, I still think this is a fantastic origin. Also kind of looks like I'm making the Paradox logo with our empire. A little bit, if you kind of squint and turn around. Well, maybe I'm going mad. I am recording this very late after recording something else because I just had to test this. I've also decided I am going to make colonies on these terrible worlds, and all I'm going to do is every time I get population, I'm, go I'm just going to resettle them, because it only costs unity as long as it isn't the very last population. So they're slow to grow, but when they do, I just move them on over, because of course, there's loads of jobs available on our other worlds. Probably change that to some city districts later, because, well, we are kind of struggling for space. Housing is going to be a big issue and probably the only limiting factor on these worlds, so what we could do is focus on the Arcology Project. Actually, yeah, that'll be the obvious solution. Go with the Arcology Project, then we get the super worlds with ridiculous levels of housing, and we're getting the free jobs from the Employment Ministry, so... I think that's definitely the way to play this empire. Took me way too long to think of that. Okay, so... This was unexpected. I've gone with Engineer the Evolution. This unlocks clone vats and everything else. But here's the thing, it automatically counts as having a clone vat on each of your worlds. Clone vats cost 30 food each per month. So suddenly I am several hundred food down every month. I wish it had warned me about that because I probably wouldn't have gone ahead with that. Oh dear. Okay, we really, really need more food then. So over here, we actually have a different species because of the underground civilization. They are agrarian, and they are acting as our main farming source. We obviously need a lot more here now, so on feast. Okay, I need to go ahead and do this. I need to increase the stability on this world, because I need this world now to really, really get going. Need to turn off nutritional plentitude. And instead, farming subsidies. Sorry, Plenitude, you are not activate right now. Technology okay. Secured. Everything's fine. Would have been nice if it gave me a warning. Once again, a problem with this being a habitat 
is that I just can't build anything else, and I can't upgrade the Habitat Administration to its next stage either, so I can't build the Research Institute, the Ministry of National Security, which is one of the other mods, um, buildings, or the Symbol of Purity, once again with the extra civics. That's a pretty big deal, and something to really consider. On the upside, the main worlds are doing fantastically. Our population is soaring, and our pop growth is fantastic. Once these worlds undergo the Arcology Project, we're just going to have such a surge of population, it's going to be a true powerhouse. But it does seem like for tech and for a lot of other stuff, really focusing on mega structures later on is going to be a necessity. Now building the very basic of mega structures. Wait, did, did one of the people just develop rapid breeders by themselves? Oh, ha! <laughs> Cats and land preference. Well, I've never seen that event happen here. So now there's two species on this world, and one of them has cats and land preference. 100% habitability on a world which is meant to have 0% habitability. Well, suddenly. The Shield of Thorn, our newest Forge world, is going to be one of the most powerful worlds we have. Because I'm going to apply that template to everyone on Katzenland. Oh, actually, can I do that because of the modified thing? No, I can't. Oh, that's a shame. But still, can I at least force the clone vats to only make them? No. Why not? Technology secured. Ah, I'm surprised by that, honestly. Why wouldn't I be able to do that then? Well, hopefully they overtake the others. I will set migration controls on them though. I only want them on this world. They should, yeah, they should outgrow the others anyway, just because they can actually grow here at full speed. That's fantastic. And yes, yeah, so obviously we found Katzen land in this run. The original home of the Katzen. It's got horribly nuked. But it gives a load of extra alloys. Beautiful. Okay, this is interesting. Unregulated urban expansion on Thorns Garden. Our control center on the Elysium Station above Thorns Garden reports that in response to rising homelessness, which is the problem currently on the main world, a group of disenfranchised colonists have built a makeshift housing zone on the outskirts of a major settlement. Hard to govern and harder to patrol, it is likely to be a haven for organized crime. As such, its presence on Thorns Garden is likely to have a negative effect on the planet's stability. There we are, the makeshift housing zone, plus 10 crime, minus 5 stability, which is still 100% because you have loads of overseers on this one because, well, it's our main world. Pop growth speed plus 5%. Um, I guess I should remove it, but the thing is I'm currently undergoing the Arcology Project, so I kind of can't. Well, it's just going to stay for a while, I suppose. A stellar particle accelerator in addition to our macro engineering site. Our tech is now being taken into the stars themselves. Tech. It's finally happened. Okay then, so we have the foot. That looks a little bit laggy. Uh, let's try it again. Okay, apparently our world is now a void, which is interesting. So with this, we now get the... Population, growth speed increase, the resources from jobs increase, all that lovely good stuff. But the question is, what happens to the Ministry of Employment? By the looks of things, it's the same, but we do have the different versions here. So, is that just still extra clerks? Yes, it is. So, we can't have minerals or food or anything else. I wonder if it, I wonder if it'd ever be worth doing the research option. Just because you do get the minus 75% tech, which is pretty brutal. We do get a lot of them, though. A lot of researchers. I don't know if that would really be worth it. I think I'll keep it as it is for now. And what we can do is start building some of these to start dealing with the consumer goods problem we're currently undergoing. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought. Why is nothing as bad as I thought it was? I shouldn't be complaining. It's just confusing to me. Sure. I need more alloys for more mega structures, please. Because I'll keep it just as it is, really. Um, maybe it's worth doing the tech version, just because we can already get loads of foundries, loads of factories, and even loads of the priests. 
we can't get tech on these worlds. So even if it is inefficient, maybe that is the play. As you can obviously tell, I'm still very much learning all this. I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, because of all the other increases we've got. Wow, yeah, because of all the other increases we've got. That uh, minus 75% isn't that bad. What are we getting plus 75% from? It's like cancelling it out. I don't know what's going on there. That could be a weird interaction with the other mod. Bear that in mind, because that doesn't seem right to me. The tech we're getting from the researchers is way too high, it seems. That could be a bad interaction, or it could be intended. I can't say. There's something I didn't notice. A scrap miner is the job now being given to this. So scrap miner gives minerals and alloys. Interesting. I think that's only on this world, right? Let's just double check. Let's turn this into the faith world. And yeah, it's just normal miner normally, but less of the, sorry, but more of them. Okay. It's at this point I need to stop recording. I was only going to be recording this for a couple of hours. It's been a fair bit more than a couple of hours now. It's early in the morning. I started very, very late at night. So <laughs> this is a really, really, really fun origin. I have enjoyed my time here immensely. And I'm definitely going to do a full playthrough on it. Normally, I'd get some likes out of this, some comments. You know, leave a like and a comment if you want me to do a full playthrough. I'm going to do a full playthrough with likes and the comments, though. Very welcome still. I adored this. Because, again, I love um, very quick population growth and everything in this game. I think it's incredibly fun. And now we have our fertile budding um, cacti. So they're going to be able to be made incredibly quick. In fact, the fertile hasn't yet updated. Ooh. Do you want to update and work for me? Complete. There we go. So 10 per month just from normal growth. And then 5 per month from the assembly. Each of these um, Elysiums will very soon completely fill up. And then all of this growth will also be put into our Arcology world. I think that's the way to play this. I think it could be incredibly powerful. I didn't do a lot of things correctly. A lot of things I just didn't do correctly at all. But we are 77 years into the game. We have our very basic mega structures all up. We have the Arcology Project. We have the Full Ascension. We're not in a bad position at all. Our economy is booming. And we're in the position now to really start focusing a lot more on mega structures. I definitely picked a few things incorrectly with the Ascension perks. But yeah, love this. Love the update to it. I love the fact it changes the gameplay so much. So, if you've enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I do apologise there wasn't much combat in this video, but in the end, we just didn't really need to. Our citadels were plenty strong enough the entire time to defend us from outside threats. Only now is it becoming a little bit more of a problem, but we do have battleships now. They don't. We could easily produce a fleet, and it was better for us to just stay on the sidelines. Honestly, being an isolationist with this empire, I think, would be really good. It's just a matter of, I didn't do that, and perhaps that's what I'll do next time. Don't know. Still loads of other stuff to see in King Structures. I am waffling because I'm tired, so... Thank you for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and Josh, have a good day. Okay, Josh.